So, Thor or Freya, suppose both champions are beneficial to you, but you have limited resources and have to pick one. So first and foremost, what is Burrito going to do? I'm going to try and go for both. I'm pretty sure I'm in a decent position to be able to go for both. I think they're both going to be really good champions. An argument could be made for Freya being a little more better than Thor because she is a defense-based champion. I think she's a defense-based champion. And she provides more survivability, which is, in my opinion, a little less common than nukers. Like, we have nukers up the ass pretty much everywhere, but support champions are kind of... The good ones, right, are going to be few and far in between. So I'm leaning slightly more towards Freya. So if I had to choose, I would lean slightly more towards Freya because it's a pretty simple transaction um, that happens in the span of like one or two days, you know, depending on if you just do one summon session, right? Freya, you get in the deck of fates and it's pretty obvious. You just pull like 20 shards and boom, you get Freya done. You can take the week off if you decide you're not going to go for both or take the month off or wh whatever you want to call it. However long it is, it's I think it's like a month if you also incorporate the five star soul events if they do one for Thor. But Thor could also hit really hard. We don't know. We don't know his multipliers yet. And with Thor being a interesting DPS champion with his Thunder Counter in the last video we talked about it. Um, he's, he's a fun character. He looks cool. He seems like he brings some interesting mechanics that I think are going to be fun to deal with or to, fun to, to practice or have fun with just to make content on, to be honest. Um, so if I were you, what would I suggest? Well, we're going to talk about that. And it kind of just depends one on who you are what your predilections are, what do you value, and what you need for your account, and whether or not you even have the resources to, to do it, right? Now for Freya, it's 20 sacreds. For Thor, you do know that you're going to need, at least for the summon rush, the equivalent of around 7 sacreds. And the champion chase, uh, we're going based off what we already know, the champion chase is going to require you to have shards there too. So I think it also works out to be just about the same. I don't really know, but let me know what you guys' thoughts are. And when I when I say it's about the same, I think about like, oh, I'm going to have to pull these amount of shards versus, oh, uh, I have to pull these amount of shards for Thor versus these amounts of shards for Freya. For me, it kind of ends up being about the same, I, I think. So... Thor is a DPS, we don't know his multipliers, could be anything from useless to OP. Freya is a support champion which, um, for, um, for which multipliers are irrelevant, she's been deemed good already by the community, doesn't seem OP but her passive is pretty unique, which is usually a good reason to go for a fusion. Yeah, uh, her passive is unique, right? It stops somebody from dying from one hit, your nuker with the highest crit damage and then gives them an instant turn, which you know, we talked about it before, and I think she's a pretty good champion. I'm going to try and go for her as well. You're lucky that Thor comes first, and we'll have the multipliers by then. Just hang around Reddit for the next few days. You'll get a better idea. If you're, start early, if you're still early game, you simply pick the one that you need now. And this is probably, like, the end-all be-all questions. Or end-all be-all answers right now. Which one do you need for your account right now? Do you need more damage in whatever content you're trying to accomplish? Or do you need better support? Remember, there's no real FOMO for this because you could, quote unquote, you could end up summoning these champions later on in the future. You just never know. Remember, I always talk about it. Fusion champions seem to have more heavily um, weight, more more weight to them in terms of being able to be summoned, like a higher summoning rate than other champions in the summoning pool. And I think there's just a good chance you're going to be able to get one of one or one or the other because it's not a limited time fusion it's just a limited time quote unquote guaranteed if you need damage go for damage in thor if you need support go for freya but i think i've seen freya can do some damage and when i get her i think i'm gonna try and build her in savage and see how much she actually smacks thor will cost fewer shards so i'm gonna go for him i do all the fusions always find card events super hard to finish unless you do them with shards if fusions are as effortless for you as they are for me go for thor that's if they both help your roster it's pretty good insight uh, another question I get is, should I spend money? Uh, that kind of just depends on you. If you're... Well, here's here's the thing, right? If you have to ask, you probably don't have the money to spare. 
right? That's my initial thinking, right? Because if you have to ask, that means you're thinking about whether or not it's in your budget. Probably means you can't afford it. And that's not to say, hey, you are lesser or you suck because you can't afford shit. Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying, if you have to ask, you know what I mean? If you don't have to ask, if you're a Kraken or you already know you're going to be absolutely gung-ho for spending on shards, you won't ask, you'll just do it. So, you know, maybe take that into consideration if you're asking. Freya is the priority, but Thor, until I fall behind on the events, Thor might be very strong, so why not? Good. I'm going for Freya, skipping Thor, he's not worth the resources. This guy was in the other video too, in the other Reddit post, and he's been getting negative comments. You have inside info, I remember saying the same thing, I remember people saying the same thing about Ninja. Just basing it on his kit, his attack-based mag uh, magic nuker without... Oh, he's an attack-based nuker without any passive preventing him from getting one-shotted. Requires accuracy to function. Will be absolutely destroyed by Stone Skin and Polymorph. This means he's got no real PvP viability after early game. True. Uh, sort of. As for Hydra, because of his self-buffing, he's going to get tar targeted by the Head of Mischief, and you can't target his A2 on the de uh, decapitated head. His passive will work poorly there. We've got free Rathalos, or we have a free Rathalos some time ago, does literally the same thing, but better. That's a strong argument. Another argument, I think, is if you feel like doing it, just do it. If you're a champion collector, that's more than enough reason for you to do a fusion or go for any any champion that's being offered, right? If you're just the type that, hey, I, I just want to collect as many champions, I got to catch them all, that's good enough reason. Don't listen to anybody else. If you're like me and just want Thor because he looks cool, or Freya just because you're curious, go ahead and do it. Wouldn't you want his A2 to, um, would you not want his A2 to target a decapitated head because the first hit is the weakest, each hit after is stronger. If you already, if you already got those buffs, which are common buffs, he shouldn't be any more targeted than anyone else. True. This is, this is true. And that's my point. If you target the decapitated head as you should for your team, he will do minimal damage with this skill. It's only useful if you're doing it manually. Then it's down to RNG and that sucks balls. I see where he's coming from, but it's also a matter of tomato tomato. You know what I mean? Few champions have a team wide attack crit damage buffs, and you being able to take this account into issue, or issue into account when building your team with Thor, you just have a, medi a mediocre. Uh, you just have a mediocre champion in your squad. It's not a worthless hassle. You could put Rathalos in that place in, in your place instead. Sorry if I sound rushed. I'm rushed because my parents are on the way. My wife and I are about to have dinner with my parents, and I'm trying so hard to get this video out um, because I, I just want to get it out before I, I leave to go to dinner. Heard the similar arguments with Ninja, just being honest, and some felt the same about Brogni. I guess we'll see. I heard the same thing about Wixwell. I was trying to tell everybody that he would be amazing. It proves nothing. This champ doesn't have anything, uh, have any innate mechanics that would make him stand out. Unlike Wixwell, unlike Brogni, unlike Ninja. This guy would definitely be somebody telling me, hey, you're going to regret missing out on Packmaster or Wixwell or Eostrid. Guess what? I skipped all of them. I'm fine. But that's just me, right? So you just kind of have to decide for yourself when you're looking at these things. Freya's passive would be perfect to keep him from getting one-shotted. They could work in together. Yeah, they could They could work very well together, now that I think about it. He's also going to be a great counter to some of the other champions with passives that put up block damage. True. That's because Freya is an insane ducking champion. Yeah, that's an argument. <laughs> I can't argue with that, shit. Uh, the only one real arena champion with block damage is Helicath, and he's not even that good. True. You could also steal the buff with Wukong instead, so... But, I mean, like that's the game, right? I can see where, where he's coming from, where everybody's going from, but it's just like, this argument could be made back and forth ad nauseum, right? I could go back and forth with you about, oh, but I have this counter. Oh, I've got this counter. I'm going to activate this trap card. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, so you're getting Freya, who can prevent Thor's death and don't think it's worth getting him. Freya's passive isn't exclusively for protecting for protecting Thor. That's true. It can be used with other champions as well. Never said it was. What's your argument here? Make Thor the highest crit damage on the team so he gets protected. So you shut about uh, um, shut up about him not having any preventative measures against dying. Problem solved. And again, we can go back and forth about this. But at the end of the day, should you go for Thor or Freya? It always it's going to boil down to this. Pick the one you need now. Pick the one that you want. Pick the one that you need right? Or pick the one that's most viable for you. Keep in mind, you know, if you have resources for both, like the, the other question is, do you want to spend as much time doing a Thor fusion? Because that takes like two weeks, four weeks, if you're considering the five star that they are probably going to offer. It's really just kind of up to you, right? 
anybody who tells you anything it, it, yeah take people's advice take people's at people's um references and guidance but also ulti ultimately always make these decisions for yourself so what is burrito saying i'm saying choose for yourself but take all these things that i'm presenting in front of you as reference points to see where you stand and you make a decision for yourself all right be an adult <laughs>